Welcome back my fantastic artistic friends to another episode of Painting with Master Temple. I'm Dan and I'm absolutely pleasured that you could join us today on this painting video. Now look at the size of this canvas. This canvas is one that I made myself. Well basically I went and bought the stretcher frame from a, from a charity shop which cost me £2. It's really good stretcher frame and it uh, is made out of beach. Uh, it did come with an image on there and the canvas that was already on this frame was really, really shoddy. I did try to gesso it, but the, the, the image kept showing through. It was really cheap. So I removed that, uh, that, that sort of canvas material and I went and got this upholsterer's canvas. Now, I'm no canvas stretcher or anything like that. I just saw the look at this and I thought this is a perfect thick heavy duty canvas and I'm going to use this. So I ironed it all out, I stretched it on the uh, the canvas uh, stretcher, stapled it all to the, uh, to, the, to the wood and we're ready to rock and roll. Well what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some gesso, plenty of gesso as well and it might take several coats of this to, uh, to prime and prep the canvas. So I'm going to start on with that. Uh, but before I do, please don't forget to, uh, to like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already, and leave me a comment, have you ever done anything like this? So I'm going to crack on with this, and I'll see you on the other side. Happy days. There we go, so the gesso is completely dry now. I've put about, about four coats of gesso on this, and I don't think I'll get any more out of this now, so that can go <laughs> get recycled. Right, so what I'm going to do now is, is do a little bit of a sketch onto the canvas. I've got a little bit of something loose in my mind where I want to do some big mountains. I want a little waterfall going off into a running river and some nice trees. The great thing about a canvas this size is we can really get the brushes going and create some immense detail uh, on this. So, quick little sketch on here now and then we can start to paint. Okay, so I've, I've put in a loose sketch now. Now, this is subject to change as we start painting. It's just a couple of far, far distant away mountains over there, leading down into some rolling hills, and now a couple of little waterfalls and a nice stream. And then we're going to have some trees either side. I'm not too sure on this cliff face here. But again, subject to change. I'm going to take a, a filbert brush and some water, and I'm going to go, if I can <laughs> get this old tray uh, into some. These are lit. Uh, Liquitex uh, acrylics and they're quite quite decent and I'm just going to mix up a little bit of colour so I'm going to go for a pale brown with a tiny bit of red and yellow mixed in there okay plenty of paint on the brush and we start off in this far distant one up here and I'm just going to really push the paint in this is acrylic paint, so we'll have to leave this to dry, preferably overnight, but we'll see where we go with it. It's such a warm day here in Yorkshire, England, it might only take a, a couple of hours to get the, uh, the base coat in. Again, this will have another layer, just like the gesso has. So we're just going to start off there like that. And as you get less paint on the brush, we can just basically lightly shade the base of those mountains there and they'll cover the the pigment will cover the pencil lines and we are going to paint oils on top of this so don't worry about that so i'm just going to change the flavor of this this mix down here again so i add a bit more of the brown i'm going to go into a different brown here this time may even come across and get some of this red oxide paint that's the, that's the name of the colour, red oxide. In fact, we'll do that. Not too much, don't want it too strong. Okay, and that's second mountains. So it's a shade or two darker. We'll push that in there. I think we sketched in a little bump there like that. So I've just put a bit more blue in those, uh, in those mountains there, and I'm just working on this section now. And again, this is just acrylic paint, and this is a bluey gray color made a bit of red oxide. That's the paint color. <laughs> it's not the floor paint or the, or the steel erectors paint. Those who know, know. 
and uh, yeah, a bit of white blues and a couple of other colours thrown in there. So we're just going to work on some shadow sides of these mountains. I think the light will come over from from this side. It's just easier for being a right-handed person to, to do that. And we'll put some rocks and everything of course there'll be some snow that you can see but again this one's going to be quite far away these ones will be a bit closer and these closer still and we'll probably get into some greenery down down at the base but i'm using a very well i'm using an old filbert brush to to really push into the fabric you remember the fabric is very very coarse so just do that well, this painting is certainly changing. As I know, when we put the original sketch up here, we, we just know it wouldn't keep the original form. Or, or, or I'll try and stay close to the original form. I've, I've changed some of the mountains, and I may even may even take out some of these mountain ranges and and just paint a bigger sky in there. But all I'm doing is just just putting in various shades of acrylic paint on here now. That's that's all I'm doing. Just in between the browns and a little bit of yellow ochre. Put some snow down there, some shadowy snow. And I did have a mountain range. This mountain range here came down right the way down there. And I'm thinking of just joining this ridge up and just having this there and that a different mountain range coming down there. I may even have to change the direction of the waterfall. But this is what we do, isn't it? This is this is it. We we have an original idea. And then we go with it and then we change our mind halfway through and we'll change it again a couple more times that's all we do so i'm just gonna put some paint and really scrub it into the fabric it's like a natural place so this looks like a natural place to have a recess or something like that so this this mountain there will come down like that uh, and then merge into the mid-ground about there Still have no idea about this side, but we're just plowing on. We're plowing on. Maybe even get a bit of the white on this. And maybe just put some shadowy colours in, some greys. And we'll hit the blue as well, get a bit of the blue in with that. Or a little bit of shadowy snow. Right, so I am actually quite happy with all this part now. I'm, I'm, I said before, I may paint over some of these mountains and turn them into the sky but i may not it depends on depends on how i feel when we get the oil paints out but obviously we've changed the direction of some of these hills down here now again this is just the undercoat okay we will be painting over a massive majority of this with uh, with oil paints but we've got a little gap here of where we're going to take if we want a stream to be there or this waterfall to be there and the stream coming down here we need something here so i'm just going to take a little bit of the browns uh, and a little bit of the black and i'm just going to pop in something like this now this is the a ready tone which is in the highlight side of things and again i don't know where this part is going to be okay might be a bigger version of this but i'm just going to pop that there scrub in some color maybe get a bit darker just really scrub it in it really wears out use an old brush for for scrubbing on canvases with acrylics because it really does wear them out So I'm still with the acrylics, I'm not, not done with the acrylics yet. I'm just putting in, again, another layer of rock or hillsides or whatever we want to call them. I'm just varying the colours as, as we go. I'm just trying to sculpt and shape some of this rock formation. We go just like that. 
again the light will come this way so these will be a highlight like if, see up here we've put a little bit of color on the highlight <laughs> like sunset colors really but uh, we'll see where we go from that and again this is just the acrylic undercoat I don't want to get too carried away. I think that, that rock looks like it could come right down there. Like that. I'll merge that back into something. And then again, we'll sculpt this. So you only have a little bit of an idea when you put it on pencil, and then you have a little bit more of an idea when you put paint down. You know the, the base coat down and then when you come to sculpt you can start to see where all these these big cliff faces and rocks and mountain tops live and that's beautiful that is beautiful don't change that don't fight that it is absolutely beautiful this is dry now some of this undercolor and it's still acrylic paint folks and i'm just putting in a little bit of this gray color okay this is a cool gray and uh, this is sort of the semi shadow side now so we're just coming out of the shadow the shadows deep here they'll be replicated in some of the snow and the grasses i want a bit of grass down here i want a bit of green it's too blue so i'm gonna have some green and i've started putting a little few little trees every now and again just to give it a little bit of a feel of a of a non-barren landscape so all i'm doing is just <laughs> i might have to hold the canvas is that big it's starting to wobble but uh yeah just put a few little colors like this on shape the rock like we discussed before we can start carving out rock formations here i don't want to be too symmetrical so I might just do something like that and then we've got to work with it whatever that shape is we've got to work with it looks like a bit of a cliff top there and then we'll come across with a, a lighter colour, a lighter colour and a lighter colour still, just to give us some different values and tones and colours on top of these rocks that might come down there. Yeah, like that. Just want you to have a little look at this thing. This is a little dab of paint that came off the brush. My daughter who's watching me uh, says, look at that, it looks like a little man running down the hillside. So, we might leave that in, I don't know. We might try and try and sneak that in somewhere. A couple of little highlights on, on some of these rocks here. Just just enough. We're gonna put some some warm highlights on this side. We'll get this in. Now this is again still acrylic paint. We probably will be painting over most of this with with oils. Well we definitely will be painting over most of it with, with oils some of this will show through that's the effect i want i'm going to work on these rocks now i've pretty much finally done all the other major stuff in a, in acrylic so just taking now this is dry this is just a bit of brown and black a bit of blue thrown in there as well i'm just going to take a little bit of this highlight color and just go over the top of these rocks just like that that maybe that comes down there and a bit there like so maybe it goes back a bit there like that now I'll just leave that to dry and i'll paint the other ones there's another one just there now that might paint over some of these with oils but it's good practice isn't it now i'm just going to lighten up this color a little bit and then hit some of the highlights is there still a bit too wet well i just want to crack on and show you what we're doing just a bit of the highlighter color and this little slanted brush really does work wonders for stuff like this the only one i've got and i can't remember where i got it from i, I need to buy more it's the, the absolutely amazing brushes okay now I've left it a couple of minutes. I'm just going to hit with a little bit of pale yellow. Just a little bit of pale yellow in places, right where the sun is going to shine onto this rock. And maybe a bit there. Like 
that. There. All right, gonna wipe off the excess yellow, just go into some straight white, and whatever dirty color we've got on the brush. And I'm just gonna pick out a couple more little highlights. So progressively getting smaller with the strokes. So we coated it, and then we put on a highlight color, and then we put on a secondary highlight color, and then we put on some more final highlights, just there, like that. And you can do this, build this up several times. I know what you're thinking, what about the shadow side? Well, we'll come to that. We'll come to that in a minute. So the shadow side doesn't need as much attention as the highlight side, but it does need a bit. So this is just a pale grey colour. I've not cleaned the brush, I've just gone into some blue and a touch of red to stop the blue from turning green. And again, we'll just pick out a couple of highlight spots that are on the shadow side. Now you can come back in again with a deeper blue and put some really dark shadows in, almost black, if you wish. And don't make them. I try this, try to say this all the time. Don't make your stones and your cartoon, uh, stones and your mountains look like cartoons with dark outlines. Just does not happen. Just a little bit of something there. And I think, hmm, maybe gone a bit too much, too bizarre on the details, but well. I think we're finished now with the uh, acrylics, so join me in a moment where we'll be painting in oils. So, another day and another medium. So, we're going to paint now on top of this dry acrylic painting some oil paints. Now, the paints I'm using are Windsor and Newton oil paints. And what I've done is I've mixed up a little bit of uh, titanium white and linseed oil, about 50 50 in this little jar. And I've made my own liquid white, okay, or magic white. And I'm just going to coat the sky in this all the way along. I'm using a fan brush, it's a little bit easier to clean than a big old two inch brush. But there we go. So I'm just going to coat the whole sky in this. And then I'm going to come back with the same color on the same brush and just tickle the mountains. But I'll bring the camera close to the canvas for that. So the fan brush has a little bit more control and going around detailed areas trying to get the uh, the thin white in. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this white on this fan brush and uh, going to gently go across these hills. With a little bit of this sky colour just blended across the top of these mountains now. Look how far it pushes that back. Got to be a bit careful there. But yeah, look how far that one looks compared to this one and this one. Okay, what we're going to do now with the sky all blended out is just take some, some white. And I'm just going to take a touch of white. And I'm just going to warm it up with the tiniest amount of red. Just there. You notice how I put what I've just got off the palette to one side and maybe just grab a touch of this blue cobalt blue there just just to tone it down a bit I put it there just so I can gauge how much I've got actually on the brush okay so I'm just gonna just touch on here and put some some cloudy shapes up here and then blend them into the into the sky you won't see some of this until we get into the dark areas and then we can put some light white on top of that you see if there's sunlight sitting in this it's gonna create a little bit of something in the sky as well big old two and a half inch brush and we can tease that out and 
play with this. So we get the desired effect that we're wanting for our clouds. Another layer. Yeah, maybe grab a bit more paint. There we go. A bit more paint. Uh, like that. And then, just like we talked about carving the uh, the uh, stonework out, this is what we're doing. We're carving out now the clouds in the sky. All right. Whoop. Okay. With a with a bit of white on the filbert brush, we can just sneak in some mist down here okay we'll put it on thin enough some of this blue will show through as well remember it's just a little bit of something across here so we're, we're really glazing the uh the acrylic with a little bit of that white paint okay just there very thin amount on the angles of the hills or the mountains or the cliff side whatever we call them because we're putting it on thin enough that the, the colours underneath will show. There, like that. So a nice bit of mist there. All the way across. Even the rocks will show through. There. We want it more mistier back here than we do up here, but we do want to do something with that up there as well. So. There. Like that. Good stuff. A bit more mist down here as well. A bit more control with a filbert brush than a, than a large brush, and it adds a little more, a little bit more paint than the, uh, the the fan brush. So there we go. Right now we can actually get a little bit of white. Okay, and you can off-white this if you want. It, you know, just but we can put snow down here. We've got some snow on there so we can make this snow look a little bit thicker in places as well there like that nice snow bank all up there hmm. i'm excited i'm excited for this so i'm just taking a bit of the black color well it's like a um, it's a really dark colour anyway. I'm just, just going to mix that in to some of these cracks and crevices there on this mountain side, just to see, it, give it a bit more feel. Yeah, like that, maybe. Get that one in there as well. Now I'll probably do the same on here, but I'm just going to add a tiny touch of, of brown to that. Smudge that in there, like so. Right, little bit of yellow and white on the palette knife, and I'm just gonna pick off some of these stones. Okay, most of the legwork is done with the acrylic, and uh, and, and th <laughs> that's the brilliant thing about this. You, you, you know, it, it's mixed media, so there's two mediums on here. And I like it, and that's why I like this. Okay, so just picking them off where we've got them in place with the acrylic. Yeah, like that. Okay, and it's a bit more texture as well on top of there, like that. Now you don't have to do every single one. There like that. That's just a little bit of light zinging right across there. <laughs> really reach to get to the tissues there. Right, a little bit of a stone colour that I've got. And then I'm just gonna again just just gently bounce this down 
the stones very light hardly touching the paint is just touching the canvas none of the knife is touching the canvas there just oh just pick out a couple there and there and maybe i want to see one there but i'm right on top of this massive monster canvas so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to stand back at some point see if i'm getting them in the right position <laughs> <laughs> right so forgive me forgive me right so folks so we're going to work on the waterfall right now this could i'm just laughing because it, it looks like a, you could make it into a train line and into a into a train tunnel couldn't you you know but um, anyway let's take some of that thinned out oil paint and a little bit of normal white paint and this is just gushing straight off there this waterfall now i might taint this I might not. In fact, I'm just going to have to put a little bit of pressure on the canvas, stop it from from uh, from vibrating and wobbling and everything. So I'm just going to put that in there. It's going to be a little bit hard to see. White on white, you get nothing but white. But we've laid out some foundations there for our colour. Right. So let's grab a little bit of Prussian blue, just a tiny touch. And I'm going to put a bit of red in that as well, just to purple it off. See what we're going to get up here. Okay. I'm, again, I'm using my old friend, the old slanted brush. I'm using it for everything. So again, Prussian blue, a bit of red, and the thinned out paint as well. There, like so. Just a couple of things down there like that. Okay, maybe it comes straight over there. Maybe a bit too. Don't have to go crazy because I mean, yeah, don't need the detail that strong this far away. Uh, like that. I'm gonna rub it then. Don't wanna rub it. Right, I'm gonna take a small rounded brush with a bit of white on there, and I'm just going to once again maybe a bit knock it off. I'm just going to put some mist down here. What a flowing this distance will create a little bit of mist. So we're just going to merge that in there. See, this this is in front of the waterfall, so you wouldn't have mist in front of that, but you would have here. And there's a bank of land that's in front of the waterfall here as well. So we're just going to contain the mist about here as well like that there we go so with a bit of this cobalt blue and a little bit of that thinned out white oil paint i'm just gonna put the stream now look how tight it is here it's to nothing and then down here it's longer than the paintbrush that will give the impression of a lot of depth to this uh, to this painting and look so we've got the stream going this way and we've got all things coming down you know it's all to that focal point just down there that it just it draws your eye in to the painting and there we go there's your top tip get your lines right you can even do it with the clouds if you wish and then get your depth right and your colors right and it draws you in now i'm not painting over every bit of the white canvas okay i'm just putting in a base coat in i think we said we're going to have a little bit of a waterfall about there because oh, we're going to put different colors down on this of course we want to marry this up with the sky as well just because it's uh fast flowing water doesn't mean to say that it's not got to have some greys in there so I'm going to change the flavour of the blues just like that uh, then down underneath this waterfall I'm just going to put a little bit uh, add a bit of brown to that and it's gone green <laughs> okay Get a bit of red, stop it from going green. Okay. 
couple of different color changes up here. Hmm. There we go. We'll work on the waterfall later. Put a, I'll just put a bit of bit of background blue in there. There we go. Okay, folks. Okay, folks. I'm just going to take some of this this white. And I'm just going to plow this in here down there. I wanted a bit of grass popping through every now and again. I don't know where I'm going to pop that. The grass. A couple of trees. But I'm just going to put a bit of white. Really scrub the white in. Go over the acrylic. That's down there. Be careful down that edge. And then I'm going to tint the white as well. I'm going to get a little bit of something going on because to remember this side or down here maybe in a bit of shadow this probably coming out of shadow now and you can see the shadow in the uh the stream cast by the uh the mountains but yeah just grab some white and we'll just lay some white down like this be careful not to go across as running man like that and then i'm just going to pick up a little bit of blue not much not much and then we can just start to, to, to change change the tone and the flavor of this just slightly add a bit of cool shadow up here like that and that'll mix with the blue sorry that'll mix with the white that's underneath so i'll just put some shadows in like that it's time to get it's time to get some trees on the go okay so bit of black bit of green bit of brown and then again i'm just gonna just throw in some arms on this just pull them out pull them out okay think like a an evergreen arm would be yeah like that some are a little bit short some are big some are fuzzy some are quite sharp and all i'm doing is using the point of this this slotted brush <laughs> i could paint a full painting with this and all i'm doing is just just tweaking in a few of these branches make some a bit thicker some a bit thinner there like that lots of paint L lots of paint there, like so and then we can come back and highlight some of these i've mixed together a little bit of chrome yellow and cobalt blue about uh about two thirds yellow, one third blue, and a touch of thin oil, which is linseed oil. And again, I've not cleaned this brush. I've just just wiped it on a paper towel, and I'm just going to put some some greenery on on some of these some of these leaves. Now I will fetch the camera up closer in a second. I just want to get a couple on there. I was intentionally having some some snow on some of these but i thought oh, it gets a bit too samey doesn't it it just gets a bit too samey so just a little bit of a little bit of green out here will change the flavor of the painting as well and add a little bit more of something yeah maybe maybe the sun maybe it's springtime i don't know maybe early spring i don't know now the snow has melted off the off the trees there we go so just a bit just a bit we don't want to overkill remember evergreens are quite dark uh, as they are we might put some just put some yellow on very tips of those where the highlights will be 
and just a little bit of yellow and blue mixed together. Just out here. Now I'll put a bit of thin oil on this. Not much, not much at all. Don't want too much. And just a bit of green out here on some of these on some of these branches. I'm just gonna tweak again with another highlight colour. Just some of these branches here that, that are not living right on the edge, they're coming out towards you. And this is just a little bit of a very yellow greeny colour, not the maximum highlight colour, they might be in shadow. And we've got a bit of a tree trunk there. I might have to widen that tree trunk. Yeah, like that. I'm just going to green it off with a touch. Maybe a touch of blue in that. Just for this side there. Just use the top corner of this little brush. That might catch a little bit of something. There. And pick out some that might live out there. Less paint on the brush. And the more you tap, the darker it'll become. But you don't want to be tapping, 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 because you'll end up with mush. We've got three or four different colours down now on these branches. And that's what we're after, some variant of colour and shape. There we go. We don't want every branch to look exactly the same. From all random. So oh, remember his little running man down at the bottom of this uh, this cliff here. I'm going to leave him in. I'll just try to just gently cover him over. But at the base of this tree, I'm just going to put a few little twigs and stuff just to just to hide him behind. Just something like that, you know. Just just not many. Just something like that, just to give a little bit of something popping up through the snow. And of course, we'll we'll shadow this out with a bit of with a bit of. Um, with a bit of uh, white paint. And well, we've got this brush on the go. We're generally all nearly finished now. I'm just going to add a couple of little things prodding through the uh, the snow down at the base of this tree. I think like that. A few little winter grasses just, just holding on there. Like, so just something about there. I might put a couple more here and there. A couple at the back. Mm, looking good. A little bit of thin oil and blue. I'm going to sign this one just there because we've finished this massive epic project. Wow, well, something this size definitely deserves a big old thumbs up. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if you've done something like this, nice project like this, please, uh, please show me some of your works. The links to my socials are down in the description. Leave me a big comment as well, you know and uh, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already it's free to do and it means the absolute world to me but until next time you guys take care of yourself stay safe happy days